Welcome to Math Minecraft Computers episode I-15. Extending the binary display to a byte. Today, we're going to use the binary display that we built over here. Out of the JK flip-flops and the binary display which shows zeros or ones as a way to extend this to show eight. So I want to start with today is we want to take down this display. We don't need it anymore. I don't want it where it is, so I'm going to do that. I'll do that high speed so you don't have to see. Here we go. Okay, I'm, I'm going to leave this wire right here that you see at that level. And then the other thing that we're going to do is we're going to make one improvement. We are going to move this piece here to come right off of this for our button. As you can see, this is outside of our regular JK flip-flop, which starts right here in this particular area. And I want to move that over to here so that we don't have to worry about that. What we're going to need to do, the first thing we're going to do is bring this up to here. That will be our input block so that it looks like Actually, I got that here, this, and that is the first block that you see there, just like this. So then we're going to go hopper, dropper, and all that. Let me get the dropper real quick. So we go with dropper facing in this direction, and we attach the hopper to it, like so. And then we add a couple of blocks below this, right here, and there. This isn't going to matter. We won't have this here either, so that won't matter. And we'll put this, and of course then what we need coming off of this is our competitor pointed in that direction, and then our repeater pointed in this direction. And then what we'll do to connect this up is we can get rid of all of this. We don't need it anymore. Just that one that I just got rid of. That's our input. And then we want to make sure that all of these are connected. Do a little bit of cleanup here. And then the way we're going to connect this down to this piece is right here. It will be a block. And it will have redstone on it. And then our redstone coming out of there. Just like that. Now what that shows is if we were to activate this side over here then we would actually do that uh, something like say this and then if i put a block there you see we activate it and that shows we're going to need one more block coming off of this so we'll actually do it over here keep in mind redstone can only point in that direction i'll bring this over there, now we're hooked up right, and when I do this, you'll see that it will toggle. When I put something in the hopper, like so. Now we're ready, it should activate. And there's the toggle. So that's how we're going to start out. Now that we've cleared the display out of the way, I actually have a faster way to do that. I'll show you in the future that uses the fill command. What we want to do is take a look at Logisim and decide what it is we're going to build. So let's, let's move to Logisim. And you recall we built this component the other day. It is our seven segment display wired with a constant one on this side, the segments uh, B and C, and the others are all wired up to a JK flip-flop. And before we had a pin here, what we're going to do now is click here on the input output and you'll actually find a button right here. Put that there and go to sim mode by clicking on the finger. And now when I click this button, it'll be exactly like we want in Minecraft is what we have. Click a button and the display over here toggles between zero and one every time you press the button. You hold the button down. It only does it on the down of the button, see? 
It's got the edge detector built in there. Now, what we want to do, however, is, is what we have right now, we want to do that eight times. So it'd be something like this. It shows you you have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight displays, eight buttons connected to eight JK flip-flops, and you can toggle any of these independently and set up however you want. And just every time you click the button, they toggle. So this is what we need. We have one display, or we have one JK flip-flop. So what we want to do in Minecraft is the exact same thing. We're going to copy the display eight times, and we're going to copy the JK flip-flop eight times, and then we're going to start wiring it up like this. So let's go back to Minecraft. First order of business is to clone our JK flip-flops. And I'm going to put them in this direction. I'm going to do one here, and then three more in that direction, and then I'm going to do them above. So there'll be four above and four below. That'll be our eight JK flip-flops. And the reason why is if you stretch a circuit left or right a long way to bring all of those all the way back to the display, it gets fairly slow. We'd be bringing wire all the way from over there, all the way back to here, because our buttons are going to be somewhere in this area right here. So instead, I'm going to stack. I'm going to do two and two and two and two four times, and we'll actually end up with eight. So of course what we need to do is we need to come down here and get our coordinates. Here, and keep in mind we've moved this, so we're actually only needing to copy this row to get all of our JK flip-flop. We hit the F3 to pop up our coordinates, and we see that it is 91, 10, 192 for this. And then the that's the beginning, and then the end of this, of course, is right here, which is 76, negative 76, 14, 205. Now, last time, I showed you how to clone to where you're standing, so we would come over here, and we want to leave one space between, because you see this wire is there. If we put another set of wire here, we have to do some tricky stuff with the guard, and we don't want to do that. So we're going to go down to here, and just so I can see easier, I'm going to clear off that. Keep in mind that I don't do it here, I do it one more down because I'm actually going to clone this level. So you can see here we are at looking at the uh, position of my feet or the targeted block since we're looking at it. You can see it's at negative 74, 9, 192. That's where we want this one to be. So instead of where we're going to stand, we're just going to do our clone command this way. We're going to clone. And we're going to start with the beginning block, which is negative 91, 10, 192. And then the ending block, if you remember from where we're copying, is negative 76, 14, 205. And then where we want to put it, okay, is going to be 91, and we want to go 17 blocks over from that, which puts us at negative 74. And then the same, it's down at 10 and 192. Got to have a space here to get that correct, and there we go. Now you can see that it's copied this JK flip-flop exactly where we wanted it. Right along there, we have one space. Well. I don't even have to move. I'm going to look in this direction, and all I have to do is do the same thing. I'm going to keep the source, the beginning, the ending. That's this begin and this end. The only place I'm going to change is where I want it. So 17 away from this is 57. And I have one there. And then I can do that again at 40. That's 17 away again. And I get another one. So that's actually much faster than moving and copying to where you are. And so now I have four copies of this. Now I want to do the same thing once again. We want to come up from here, four, one, two. Right, make sure you're right above this block. Three and four, and I want to put it here. Now that's going to be pretty easy to calculate. I wouldn't have to check this, but I will. You can see it's at negative 91, 18, 192. It's right above that, so we've actually moved up from the bottom up to there. That was at 10 down there, if you'll recall, so we moved up to 18. So now I'm going to pull up that same command that we've been using. It's the same source and same destination. The difference now is I'm going to go back to my original coordinates, which were 91. 
And instead of going at 10, I'm now going to go at our coordinates above there, which is 18. And you see right now, I get another copy of the JK flip-flop there. Now, guess what I do? I'll look this way so you can see, but I'll do the same thing. All I have to do is adjust this number now through the same set we had before, which was negative 74. There's another one. And then change this to 57. There's another one. And then lastly, our last one is at 40. So by using just a simple little bit of math, we can make everything much faster. And here we are. So we've got our JKs here. Now the last thing I'm gonna do, just to make sure that everything is good, is I'm gonna put a sign for all of these. I'm gonna clear this up just a little bit. And I'm gonna put a sign for these, starting with zero is going to be here. And then up here, I'm going to put one. And then over here, we'll do the same thing. Right in front of this square, we're going to put two and three above. I'll just keep doing that. You can do it high speed. We'll get these numbered. It's complete. So we have zero through seven. We always start numbering with zero in this when we're talking about bits. You'll see in a bit why. Okay, now the last thing that I'm going to do is figure out where I want to put my display. And I want to go back here far enough that I can see the whole display. So we'll start by actually selecting, I'm going to go to this JK flip-flop here, and I'm going to line it up just with this square right here. You look at the coordinates of that real quick, you can see that we are at negative 80, 18, 190, okay? And the important is the negative 80, that's why I've chosen this one. And I'm going to come from here 7, so 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, and 7. And we're going to clone our first display of our 1-bit display over there here. And they're going to go in this direction in front of the JKs. So let's head over to the 1-bit display that we built and get the coordinates, and we will be right back. Keep in mind that we're going to copy this corner, so I'll mark this to make sure that everybody can see it very easily. I'll go with my standard blue terracotta. Here. So that's our beginning position. And of course our ending position is up here. This one is only three. That will actually copy our inverter and everything. Now the other part is you see this is sitting on the ground here. These two pieces. Um, we're not going to need those. They are actually... Because they're just going to fall. If I clone them into the air, they're going to fall, and that's what I'm going to be doing. So I'm just going to get rid of these two very quickly. You can see where we're going to copy. So we'll get our coordinates here. We had them last time, but we'll verify them again. You can see they are at negative 66, 15, 81 for that one. And over here we are at negative 62, 21, 84. All right, we don't want to clone these, so I'm going to get rid of those, and uh, we'll go back over there. And we'll see you in a bit. Here we are on top of our block. There's the coordinates. You can see that it is actually negative 80, 18, 185. That is where we're going to put the first display. Remember again, we're going to need eight of these. I will just pop up the clone. In this case, we're going to change it. We're going to clone our coordinates of our display, which was negative 66, 15, 81, that's the beginning. We clone to negative 62, 21, 84. Where do we want to put it? We want to put it right here at negative 80, 18, 185. And there it is. You can count this as one, two, three, four, five long. And we want the next one to start right here. Since it's clear on this side, we can do that. Now that's going to be pretty simple on where we want to put it. First of all, I'll show you by putting a block here and popping up. You can see we're at negative 75 because if that was 80 and we subtract 5, we get 75. So to do these, it's going to be very simple. I'll stand over here and all we're going to do is go by 5s. So the only thing that changes is this. Of course, you can just verify that by 
getting on any block. And as you see, as I move, here's the 80, 79, 78. We're actually adding one in this direction when you're facing south. That's what I'm gonna let you know that you actually add five to this every single time. So we're gonna look this way and we'll pop up that clone. And we'll change this to 75. I shouldn't even have to delete that. And 18, and then we want to leave it at 185. Next one, that's two, three, four, five, six, seven, and finally, our last coordinate, 45, eight. If we go back, you'll see that we've had one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight displays to match our eight JK flip-flops. So I think that this is all good. I'm going to go to, at the beginning of these, I wanna get somewhere where I can see them all, which is probably gonna be somewhere about right in here. And I'm going to start actually putting my buttons down. And so I'll start uh, by going here. The way I'm going to do this is bring these up to here. And then I'll have a button right here. So they'll look like this. There's the button. And then we'll bring the wire down to here. And so I'm going to build these high speed. I could clone these, but th there's no point. This will be very quick and uh, we'll be back. There's our eight. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight of these. They're not all exactly alike, but that's okay. The last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna label these with the z labels as well, just like we did before. So we start here with the zero and we go through seven. So I'll do that, be right back. They're all labeled. It's time to start hooking these things up. This is zero, and that is the zeros. JK flip-flop there, and this is the number one here. This is also going to be our zero byte here. So that means this JK flip-flop outputs to this display and inputs from that button. So the first thing that I need to do is remember where to input. We input it down to this block right here. So it's gonna be something like this. come up like this and that'll actually be our input to that button. Now we have a few more here. Keep in mind that we will have one coming up from right here as well. There's the input. So we'll have one there and this will help you actually plan where to put the wires and it will be right there. Now it gives you an idea that you're going to need to make room and then you have the same thing up here. There's the uh, block coming off our input. So we would need something along these lines. I guess I can do it like this. There's redstone there. I want to see where we end up. This is the input, keep in mind. So this is going to go to the next button over. So it looks something like this. And if that is going to come from one space away, and we have to stay out of this one, I can really bring that anywhere that I want to, like this. So that means the input to this particular uh, JK is going to be right here. It will come down from here. And it's there. 
like this. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to keep in mind that this one is going to go somewhere along here, like so, and then keep this one spaced. This is the output, or this is the input from this one, and it's going to go to the next button. So all I'm going to do is keep it spaced properly away, and we're going to do this. It's going to connect up to that button. Right there. It looks like it comes off here. I'm completely and entirely wrong, so it's actually better to extend these this way. And then we have to get rid of these, because I had that wrong. So what I like doing in this case is going ahead and extending all of these down a ways. That gives me exactly where I'm going to go. I know this one's going to come here. And then it's going to go over to that wire. Okay, so there's my two inputs. This is the input to JK1, and this is the input to JK2. I'll go back and show you how you can test these. Now, to know where to put the repeaters, because this is larger than 16, you simply put a redstone block at the same level that your button is, that which is right there. So we start at 15, and then we'll find out exactly where we need to put repeaters uh, on these. You can just do it this way. Each of these. Looks like we're short here again. And we are short somewhere back here on this one. So that goes in there, it's all looking good. If I cut this wire and redo it, if our input is working, we've got a flip-flop down there, which is good. If we move up here, we've got that repeater in place, we want to find out where we're losing power we can find out that we're actually losing it all the way up here. So it's kind of a worst case scenario for us. You can see that it comes to here and I actually need a repeater in this section. Now you can always test, just put one repeater here and see if that's going to work. And to do that, all we do is cut this wire and put it back. And if it flip flops, all is well. It should only flip once. So check the lights out. Do they flash? Nope, they're steady on. So it shows that you can put a repeater going into this block and everything is still fine. So that's our inputs. Now if you keep the mind in the states of these two flip-flops, I'm gonna set them to the same. They are both with the left light on if you look up here. I've got the, the other one on so I'm gonna reset this very quickly. This is the input right here just cut it and replace it and it'll flip flop over so they're both on the left now if all works well i should be able to come over here and press this button i've got to get rid of these and that should flip flop the bottom one you see it flip there and then the same thing here that'll be up here and you see that one flip flop too it moved over so the buttons are working so the last part that we need to do is we now need to connect the output of the jk flip flop which is way back there to here. So I'm going to go under there, and our output is going to go to the respective switch. I'm going to go ahead and green, make this part of the circuit. This is where we had four, and I'm going to say that it comes to here. Now, when you do that, you see you get this connection here, so we need to add a guard block. And this is going to be our output. I can connect over to here, it can connect to here. Either one is fine. And it's coming from there. So depending on where you're building, you would run into different places where you could you could bring this down and keep it away. I'm going to choose here, because as you can see, that is far enough away from our input. And uh, keep in mind, I use green for a part of a mechanism. I use white for connections. And you can see that is going to be a problem because it would be right there. So you just have to route these going to go down here, like so. If I put wire, you can always test. There, there, there. See, you have no connection, so you're good. And then wire this up, like so. That is going to go over to this output here. So I just need to bring this over. If it gets too dark, you can always add torches or something down here to help you see. Now, one thing you can't do is you can never put 
I'll show you. Let me route this over this torch. I put wire on it. And you see it's lit because it's right above that torch. So you cannot run. I can run this too high, which might be a solution to that problem. So maybe here I come up one. And then over the torch. And you'll see if I put wire here, we're okay. So there's lots of ways you can get about that, but just make sure you never put one over a torch. I'm going to go ahead and bring this out this way. And this will be our output right here. Get some redstone on this. Like so. Now for testing, I just want to use get this toggled, I can toggle it by putting a block here and then getting rid of it. And now you can see we have an output over there. And as you can see, as usual, we're going to start putting our repeaters in. Looks like I need to put a repeater right here. I can't put it there. And we're going to probably lose power at some point here, or maybe we won't. And it looks at like there. We almost got it. You see right there, there's a zero. What we can do in that case is find, uh, put our repeater, looks like probably right down here would be a good place for it. And now we're hooked up and we're all set. So there's our first one hooked up, output to the bottom JK. That means if we come here and flip this button right here and press it, we get a one, press it again, we get a zero. Now all we do is for all of these JKs that we have here, we hooked them to the proper one. The next one over, keep in mind we don't need this inverter anymore. I'm just going to get rid of it on all of these, get it out of the way, like so. Now we're ready to hook these up. I'm going to hook up one more and then uh, you should go ahead and try to figure it out on your own on how you want to do it. Keep in mind our input for this one is right here. So that means instead of the, the wire running that way, it's going to run exactly to it. And I don't need this. Oh, actually, got that backwards. That's the wrong one. This is the next button over, so I'll be needing some redstone in here like this. But we're going to hook the output of this one right here is going to go to the input of this component here. Once again, I'm going to fix this, like so. I'm going to put the guard block up, and we're now ready for an output. So the output of this, which is right over there, is going to come to here. That is easy enough to do. Just follow along. That's a bridge that works. Let's get our wire in place. We don't need that block. And then the last one that we need, of course, is right here. We got an out for that. You can see that we are on the wrong input, so how do we toggle it? Now we just power this anywhere that we can. It looks like we have a problem here. I can't have that connection. That connection you see right there is wrong. So what we're going to have to do is do that over here instead. And then uh, we'll put our block here. That'll cause it to toggle. And we can now check our output wire. So there, I caught that bug in time. Put the repeater here. We're losing power right there again, so I can put the repeater anywhere back here. And we've got that connected, so this should be good. This is our input from the button. I did rewire it, so this may not work. I may have to do some repeater work, but I doubt it. Press this. We get a one. Press it again. 
it is zero. And that's what we're going to do. So I'm going to do two more slowly, and then the rest of these you should be able to do. Take a pause and see if you can get this yourself. This one's a straight shot. Keep in mind this is the input. We go from the button to the input of the JK. I'm going to do the same thing I did before by a redstone block here to light those wires. This one goes above. So I'm going to bring it right over here. This is the next button. This goes to the JK above. That inputs directly to there, just like it is. This one will input up here. We'll start building a bridge to get it up there. Like so. That will go up there. That also means that our output from this one needs to go to the next available switch, which is right here. Make those same changes. The guard and the wire here. And we're ready. So the output of this is going to go there, and the input comes down to here. Way back here, actually. So this should do it. And that one is hooked up. All we're going to do is find out, of course, we're going to have a repeater here. We'll need a repeater there, too, because they all end at the same place. And then we'll see where we run. You see it's a 2 there, so it's not going to make it. So we put a repeater there, and we're good. I can toggle it now by doing this. Oh, I can't have a repeater there, of course. That wire and a repeater. There we go. Now it's toggled. I'm going to leave it with the output turned on. And the output, you can see, is going to go up to here. So we'll bring this out. It goes actually over to this one right here. Got to get these, make sure they're uh, not get these confused. And so in that case, I will bring the output. It looks like about right in here is going to work fine. And this is the output here. So we'll start coming up. Straight runs will help you with repeaters. I like it like that. And with our output turned on, we'll see exactly where we run out of power. It's going to be right there. So we'll put a repeater here. And there we go. And we're totally powered here. So now we have our input connected and our output connected. I'll go ahead and test that real quick so we'll get rid of these two blocks. And if I press number two here, we should get a repeater. Now, you see right here, the top of that is not powered. That means that our power for the third one over, one, two, and it's three, it's off right there. You see somewhere we're losing power and it's right there. So I have to have a repeater in here somewhere too. And I think the place to put that repeater is going to be down here. This will reboost everything. And you'll see that that top light will now be on. Because we were dying right there. So that's our third one cooked up. The last one we see, this is the output of this one right here. Excuse me, the input of this switch is going to the top of this one. So this is the output. We can kind of look them and eyeball them and line them up here. And that's going to be this one. So instead of, I'm going to do the output of this first because you can kind of see it's going to get in the way, probably of the input, because the input has to come up from there. And it can connect in here, like so. And this might be where we need to actually do a step up with the ladder to keep it out of the way. But it also, you can see that our output would have to come somewhere in here. So that's pretty close. I'm not really liking that that much. It's going to get in the way. So instead, I think I will bring the... Uh, that is the next button over. So there's 0, 1. This is going to go up to there. So I'm going to do the input first. Like 
like so. It's going to be right in the way of our output, but we can bring our output over to this one. So let's go ahead and do this. I just need to get another block here. And one here. And then we'll wire that up. All right, there's the input of that. And then we're going to work our output by coming over to here first. And then up. And that'll keep it out of the way. And once again, we don't want to go right on top of a torch. So I've got a couple of choices. I could move it over one. I could get it too close to that. Or just come up and over. It doesn't really matter how. There we go. We're one up above. Then we're going to bring this one up to that level. This way. And that's our output. And it connects in right there. Now we need to go add our block back so that we can test our distances for this. And I'll just go ahead and set it right back where it was to be there. I'll show you why. If I put it here, I get a 15 here, not there. I want my 15 up there at button level. We've had this one tested, so we're looking at this one. And we're dying right there. Unfortunately, the easiest way to boost this is way down here, because that's a ladder that goes all the way up. I don't always like doing that, but sometimes you don't have a choice. But we made it easily, and we have our output turned on now, which is exactly what we want. we got to find out where to put our repeaters here, there. And you see automatically we've got our zero over here, which is good. All the way. should be a zero when uh, we're toggled on this side. And then the last thing you see is we don't have that connection there, so once again the wire and this connection here can't be there so we put a guard just like that now our first four should be enabled that's that we're just going to go here make sure we didn't mess up the second one we did not and this one of course should toggle as well and that's it now as an exercise I'm going to pause and stop here and you guys can figure out how you want to wire up these Four here, keeping in mind that this one is going to there, this one is going to there, and that means that one is going to that JK. This one here, excuse me, is going to that JK, this one's going to the one on top of it behind there, this is going to that JK, and this is going to the one on top of it back there. So time for you to start hooking up. We'll see you in a bit.
Uh, so four and five are now working. Although I originally connected them all wrong, had the wrong outputs going, so that leaves us with the last two. I'm going to keep them in the one position. Once again, I'm going to put my block right here as my way to light the wire. Keep in mind that the input from this one is there, and this one goes to the bottom. So I could run it right along here. The last two are now working. Six and seven. Now, we just check them all. And the last one. All done. There's our 8-bit display using JK flip-flops and buttons. And we're going to use this to learn how to actually read and use binary. I'm going to slowly walk through this so you can see how all the connections worked. I got a little confused and had hooked up uh, this particular one to the wrong JK output in the, a couple of times, but I finally got that all straightened out. Here's how they're connected. You can see this comes down, runs along there, goes to that output, and the input comes straight down here. The next one, the input comes across here and goes up, and then the output from it is routed up and over this way. And then the next one, then of course, this one is number six. It's going to go down and input down to there. Through, it's the bottom one, so this is its input right here. And then its output runs across here. And up to the second to the last one. And then our last one, the input runs along here and up. And then its output simply comes off this and there. Now there's really no right or wrong way to do these that could be improved. Um, there's some changes we can make to circuits to make wiring easier, which we'll learn later. But this is it for now. So there we have. Choose whatever you want. Maybe we want every other one on. And there we have it. What does this all mean? Well, we will find out next time. That is it for I-15. This is Imroy. Keep on learning. See you next time. Give me some scribes and likes if you like this video.